Greetings and salutations, citizens of the World Wide Web. My name is Josh. Thank you guys so much for watching. And you've heard me talk about how much I love selling pre-owned clothing online, like eBay and Poshmark, Grail, whatever. But today you're gonna hear how much I hate selling pre-owned clothes online. Let's get into it. There are many things that I hate. Onions, the DMV, uh, putting coconuts in food that coconuts have no business being in. Um, I don't mind coconut by itself, but there's no reason you should put it inside a cake. Um, it has the consistency of the dried onions that I referenced before, so you can see my dilemma. And while I love selling pre-owned clothes online, there are many reasons to hate it. And here are my reasons. And the first reasons have everything to do with size, sizings, measurements, etc. Because you can find the coolest, dopest vintage t-shirt, but if it's an X small, an extra small, it's not going to be worth as much because the potential pull of possible customers is reduced significantly. And to make matters worse, from decade to decade, sizing changes dramatically. An extra small in modern day sizing is probably something that an infant would have worn in the 70s or the 80s. So it's very hard to get sizing correct over certain decades. So we put up a large, it's modern large, but the reality is that that large probably would only fit someone small to medium. And this is further compounded by the fact that old clothes and clothes that have been worn shrink some. Sometimes they do stretch out, but most of the times they shrink. And because they shrink, it, does no, it no longer fits the measurement requirements of the sizing that is indicated on the tag. In fact, so much so that I've come close to swearing off anything made of wool. Because it's like anyone who owns a wool sweater thinks that they can throw it into their boiling pot of ramen they make making for lunch and they think they can wear it afterwards. You can't. Hot water makes this stuff shrink like crazy and just about every wool sweater at a thrift store is shrunk like crazy and so it can be very difficult when you try to sell one of those things because they're not going to have any correlation to the printed size on the tag. And this is one of the other reasons I hate selling pre-owned clothes is because sizing creates so many problems for customers and no matter how many times you plaster on your listing to hey look at the measurements don't just go by the size look at the measurements you're inevitably going to get people who just clicked on the item bought and you know later realize this is not going to fit them because while they're an xl uh the xl from 1985 is nowhere near the right size now because the differences in sizing can lead to high returns sometimes those returns are what we call in the ebay world uh, fit returns they just did it fit but sometimes because people get really confused they are returned as item not as described and that hurts your ebay reputation you end up having to pay for the shipping if you don't already offer free returns and that can create problems for your ebay account we see this a lot in selling vintage jeans because vintage jeans tend to shrink because they're made of cotton and the sizes that they use in the 90s and the 80s are not the size they use today so we almost entirely have gotten rid of advertising the size and we simply advertise the measurements so if you want if you have a size pair uh, so if you have a size five Levi's 501 we're going to list it as what the measurements are we're not going to really put that size 5 anywhere but maybe in some of the item details this has actually dramatically reduced our return rate for vintage jeans because people can easily see oh here are the inseam and the length and they can get that approximation and then we use all the other measurements like hips and uh, rise in the details and they can figure that out for themselves now returns continue to be a problem with clothing and one of those is the worst or in my opinion the second worst reason to get a return and that's because someone bought an item wore it to their cocktail party, their graduation party, their Halloween costume party, whatever, and then 
a couple days later, I'll return it to you. And it gets even worse if it's an item not just as described, not just a fit, or I didn't like it. And then you're stuck with the bill, and that is further headache for you and me. Now, what's the first worst return scenario? Uh, well, it belongs to electronics. I'm gonna continue to hate on like electronics here. Um, that's because, let's say you have a vintage reel-to-reel, -reel, and you sell it to some guy for like $400, and you're like, great, I just made a huge sale and he gets it, takes a component out that he needs for his other reel to reel ships it back to you as a return says, hey, this doesn't work like it's supposed to, and you get it back, and of course there's parts missing, and you're like, well, hey, where's the parts? And they're like, uh, I didn't have the parts when I got it, but who's to say he's wrong, and who's to say I'm right? Uh, unless you have photos of the actual component part, but if the component part is inside of the unit, you're stuck. Yeah, I don't really like selling electronics, sorry. Anyway, another reason to hate selling used clothing is the margins. Especially if you're selling like more modern clothing like uh, Lululemon or Michael Kors or something like that in that sort of strata of the value market. You might see your margins squeezed because it used to be, I remember this with Lululemon, I could sell a Lululemon anything for like 30 to 40 to 50 dollars. Uh, back when it was sort of coming up. Then everyone realized that Lululemon was becoming very popular and was commanding a decent price on the secondary market. And then all of a sudden, you can't sell it for 25. Uh, and that obviously may be different for different products, but I'm telling you, I've seen the price go down on these dramatically. And that's because be there's so much inventory out there, and we've talked about this as to why we love it, the flip side is because there's so much inventory, there's a lot more competition. And when there's more competition, that tends to drive prices down. And if you can't be the absolute cheapest seller, you may not even make a sale. I know people, and I do it myself sometimes too, they will take a loss on a sale uh, just to get sort of the algorithm turning. But because people are willing to do that, that, you sh that shows you how competitive that market can be. So because it's flooded, your margins get tight. So you have to be very, very selective. And that can be very frustrating when you can't find something out there in the inventory ocean that gives you a strong margin. Another reason to hate selling used clothing is fashion. Fashion changes. People and companies come and go and things that are hot now will not be hot maybe in five years. And so that can create a scenario in which you are constantly on your toes having to try to figure out what is in fashion and what is not. So take Coach for example. It used to be that Coach was a pretty popular brand, but over the last 20 years took a pretty big hit in terms of popularity. Now I think they've done some stuff to really help them get back on track. But because they lost popularity, the value of their items on eBay lost value. So you have to be very, very focused. It's not like something you're gonna buy that someone always needs, like toothbrushes, like uh, you know certain electronics, like uh, iPhones and stuff like that. That stuff is constantly going to be in demand. Um, and it's, the cycles are a lot less vicious uh, when it comes to pricing. Now another reason to hate used clothes is condition. And we've talked about condition as a positive because like a pair of jeans that's all tore up and distressed can actually potentially sell more uh, than a jean that is in great condition. Uh, that's because in this scenario, a small defect can ruin a great piece. Uh, and you can find a nice polo shirt, let's just say, and it has a hole in it, and suddenly that nice polo shirt might have given you 15 to 20 bucks, it will give you zero, because nobody wants a polo shirt with a little hole in it. Uh, nobody wants a jacket with, you know, a busted zipper. So a defect can be positive when it's part of the aesthetic, but when it's not, when it's a defect in the functionality or not part of the aesthetic of that outfit, then it's going to be a detriment. And the only thing worse than not buying something when you're at a thrift store to resell is to buy something that you can't sell from a thrift store. And because there's lots of surface area on clothing, little stains, little holes can often slip underneath the radar and you have to be extremely observant. And sometimes I don't find those little flaws until they're up on the 
uh, picture taking area and I'm taking a picture and I realize oh my goodness there's a stain here oh my goodness there's a rip here oh the zipper doesn't work so condition can be super annoying because it's not always helpful to the aesthetic of the clothing and the, definitely not the function of the clothing now the final reason that I hate selling used clothes is storage it's not as simple as uh, replenishables or things that come in boxes that can be easily sorted uh, these are unique pieces almost each and every one of them so creating a catalog is very difficult and creating a system in which you can sort through all this stuff and find the things very quickly is not as easy as you would think we've come up with a system that works fairly well for us but it's still not simple and there's still times where I spend too long looking for something or something is hidden behind another thing because we hang most of our clothes up and that is just a frustration that's probably going to be there and I'm not going to be able to completely eliminate it and I have to adapt to that and that can be frustrating and annoying but you have to do it all right guys so thank you so much for watching uh, and putting up with all my hate uh, I know that it was very difficult to listen to all this negative energy, but I hope it helped you get some perspective and maybe with your business or what you're trying to do in the future. And then we will see you guys on the next one. So please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be reminded when we post. And we will see you guys later. Peace.